Here's yet another update, third update, perhaps the last, regarding James, the employee of the former Navy SEALs in Virginia Beach, who ended up getting arrested for allegedly stealing an AR-15 lower from the company. What? We'll explain everything in a second. And taken down to the police station in Virginia Beach, and then having to be unarrested apparently like 10 minutes later because this lower surprisingly just appeared. Oh. Saved by the freaking mailman. Yeah. Hell yeah, appreciate you sir. Yeah. I, uh, Thank you for being cool with me and cooperative with me. Cause I'm my man I knew like, I ain't yeah. do shit like, like so it has to get worried out. Yeah. That kind of thing. And like I said, if that, if that happened and you were already in custody, then like you yeah, would have just been awesome. unarrested. I went over the full footage in my first video, which is like my second highest view video. Then in my last video, I went over the response from the employer and the fact that their attorney is trying to get me to remove that first video. Here's what this update is about. Several of you submitted FOIA requests to the Virginia Beach Police and you got several different responses and you're not going to believe this. This is outrageous. Just to briefly recap, the problems all started for James when this guy, a disgraced former Navy SEAL commander, whom I discussed in the last video, told some of his cop buddies with the Virginia Beach Police that James was suspected of stealing this AR-15 lower because he was on video leaving with it, but not coming back with it, and they never were able to locate it. I saw him leave with the box, I saw him come back. Not the box. He didn't send it? No. So that guy was apparently friends with this officer, Dominic Reyes, of the Virginia Beach Police Department. At one point during the body cam footage, we can see Officer Reyes saying he needs to go inside and talk to his boy. We believe that to be the same former Navy SEAL commander. I'm going to walk back in there and say hi to my boy real quick, and uh, I'll meet you guys there. So instead of treating this like any normal allegation, they basically treat this guy James like he's a suspected serial killer or arms trafficker or something. Best case scenario, someone made him do it. Worst case scenario, he's involved with some trafficking. So. Yeah. And this officer Reyes makes a big deal of going inside this business and confronting James and instead of asking him any questions about the allegedly missing item, just makes a big deal of taking him into custody in just a very dramatic way. What? We'll explain everything in a second. So Officer Reyes arranges this elaborate interrogation where they're going to put James into this cold room and then play good cop, bad cop and get him a bag of chips and a glass of water and get him to confess to being some big arms trafficker because of this allegedly missing lower. I'm going to walk back in there and say hi to my boy real quick and uh, I'll meet you guys there. Just get him in there. Um, if you're sitting for a little bit, that's good. Okay. okay? It's not going to be too long. Good. So, like, 45 minutes from now. <laughs> we usually interview him. Do you just keep him cuffed in the mic the whole time? Mm -hmm. Can we usually interview him? No. Um, ask him if he wants some water. Alright? Ask him if he wants some chips. You cuff him to the front or you just let him? Uh, no, so he... he what, the detectives will guide you through it. Okay. Okay. But then, while James is being held at the police station, that missing lower is found. And they actually show it to Officer Reyes. So we got the box? Yeah. Where's it at? Taylor, can you give us a break? I'm sorry? Can you punch out here for a second? Yeah. Yeah. Just shut the door. Yeah. Yeah, so 10 minutes after you guys left, this showed up. Can we open it and confirm it's in there? 
I, I know, but like. Nope. Right. Sooner brought it in. He opened it. Oh, he did? He did. It's in there. I'm really happy that this happened. Yes. So then James was brought back to his now former place of employment and he was released from custody. And Reyes specifically told him that he wasn't arrested. And if he had been arrested, he would have been unarrested with this new information. Oh. Saved by the freaking mailman. Yeah. Hell yeah, appreciate you, sir. Yeah, I, uh, thank you for being cool with me and cooperative with me. Because I'm my man, I knew, like, I ain't yeah. shit. Like, like, it had that's, to get worried out. Yeah. That kind of thing. And like I said, if that, if that happened and you were already in custody, then, like, you yeah, would have just been so. unarrested back down here. The last thing that Reyes did was go back inside the business and then tell the same guy with the employer that he was going to make this huge report. He was going to document this whole incident just in case there was some problem where the documentation might be important. All right, Jonathan. So, it's report number right there, okay? Because I'm going to document the heck out of it. Okay. Just so it doesn't fall back on you guys, okay? Roger that. Um, and that brings us to what's happened now. Last week, several FOIA responses came in that you guys had submitted, those of you who are Virginia residents, to the Virginia Beach Police. And I really appreciate you sharing those with me. Here's what happened. Some of you got no response at all, just flat out denial. At least one of you got a just bare bones response with nothing substantive. And the biggest squeaky wheel of you who threatened to sue them got the actual report. But here's the thing, pretty much the entire thing, the entire eight page report is completely redacted, just a total cover up from the police department. This is actually all it says, narrative by officer Dominic Alexander Reyes, on 12-4-23, I responded to blank at 26 blank International Parkway for a report of a larceny of a firearm. Blank blank, who advised me that on 11-13-23, at 1657 hours, James Humphreys, of course, they don't redact his information from this anywhere. He's not the one being protected here. Blank blank, a serialized BCM AR-15 lower. Then paragraph after paragraph of redaction. Then it says, I arrested Humphreys for larceny of a firearm and for possession of a Schedule One substance while carrying a firearm. Then redaction, redaction, just a whole paragraph full of them. Then it says, with no charges to proceed on, I unarrested Humphreys. Then more sentences redacted. Lastly, it says, I notified Sergeant R. Caraballo, his supervisor, I presume, of the case and the unarrest. And that's the report. And this is just outrageous. Honestly, I've never seen a police report redacted this heavily. How do they justify this? Well, this is the letter that they submitted to the individual who um, had threatened to sue them and submitted the FOIA request. And it says, in closed, you'll find the public copy of the police report. Virginia Code Section 2.2-3706.1D now provides, now provides that criminal investigative files related, relating to a criminal investigation or proceeding that is not ongoing are excluded from the mandatory disclosure provisions of the Virginia FOIA. Furthermore, the requested report or material is part of an administrative or internal investigation. As such, it is exempted from disclosure under section 2.2-3706B9 of the Code of Virginia, the Freedom of Information Act. The eight-page internal copy of the police report, four-page call for service, and 32 axon videos, totaling approximately six hours, 22 minutes, and 59 seconds, are being withheld under the aforementioned exemptions. If you have any questions, you can call or email specialist CIV Serrano. So they're basically withholding the report. And apparently the state legislative patriots in the Commonwealth of Virginia did indeed, likely at the behest of 
the law enforcement lobby changed their FOIA law, I think in 2021, to make police reports non-mandatory under certain circumstances. In looking into this, the excuse that they gave to change the law here and and make this non-mandatory is that they were worried about like photographs of crime victims being released publicly, uh, protecting crime victims. Th- that was the pretext for this. But we know and we can see now in the pudding that the real reason was to protect law enforcement with secrecy. And that's what they've been doing for a long time here in West Virginia. And no way does their action here in withholding this report protect any victims of crime. All they're doing is protecting themselves and perhaps their friends. And they're protecting themselves from a documented, already public, constitutional violation by one of their police officers against a member of the public. And they do imply at least, or they say that there's an internal administrative investigation ongoing, perhaps um, internal internal affairs investigation or what have you. Is Officer Reyes still there? Has he been disciplined? We're not going to know because even though they are supposedly public servants, they are keeping it from the public. Is it because they're embarrassed? Is it because they're worried about liability? Who knows? Even in what they did show us, it shows a constitutional violation. We see in the video that Officer Reyes claims that he did not arrest James, that even if we had arrested you, we would unarrest you. And they put in the report that they did unarrest him, which implies that they arrested him to begin with. They had no arrest warrant for James. In order to perform a warrantless arrest under the Fourth Amendment, they would have had to have probable cause. They even concede in what we can see that's unredacted in the police report that there was no probable cause to arrest James. They took James into custody with multiple police officers present. They handcuffed him. They perp walked him out of the building. They put him in a police car. They transported him to the police department. They put him in a cold room and interrogated him, ultimately bringing him back later. Whether or not they completed the paperwork or actually charged him at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. At a certain point, they have arrested him just objectively, whether or not they admit it. There's a U.S. Supreme Court case out there from 1985, United States versus Sharp, that says that at some point, an investigative stop or encounter can transform into a de facto arrest, and that this determination must consider the law enforcement purposes to be served by the stop and the time reasonably needed to effectuate those purposes. That case was just cited by a Second Circuit opinion that came out today, where a police officer yanked a guy out of a car in Connecticut just because he was legally armed with a permit and held him in handcuffs for 30 minutes while he searched his car because the guy was armed, even though it was completely legal. And that court said that they can't just claim that that was a Terry stop. That was an arrest, whether they admit it or not. And really, it's the same thing here for what they did to James in Virginia Beach. Yet they're covering it up. This is what a cover-up looks like. I mean, they literally are covering up with black, it's not marker, but basically black marker. Those of you who are residents of Virginia who have elected representatives who were supposed to be representing your interests in Richmond, you may want to contact them about this because they duped you or they were duped that this was to protect crime victims. And now look, it's being used at least by the Virginia Beach police to cover up their own misconduct from the public whom they were supposed to serve. So contact your politicians if you're in Virginia and point out what they're doing. Keep the pressure on the Virginia Beach police because they cannot be allowed to get away with this. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe both here and at the blog at thecivilrightslawyer.com. If you've already subscribed, check to make sure you haven't been unsubscribed because I'm hearing more and more that that's happening to people. Remember, our rights don't end where your fear begins. Freedom is scary. Deal with it. Thank you.